Uh, I'll accept a motion to approve the agenda as written. So moved. Is there a second? So. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, public comment. We'll take public comment under each item if needed. If there's any, there's Debbie sitting over there. Hello. Um, so we'll move right into the transportation plan, Mike. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. On page 9, there's a notice of a public review period that was approved at the April meeting uh, to notice the public on adding uh, a, a number of different funding uh, uh, items for the NRTA. Uh, one in, in, uh, is accessibility improvements to a bus stop on Orange Street near Bay Street right across, uh, involving the Landmark House. And there's a number of uh, bus replacement and maintenance equipment as well. So uh, this meeting was scheduled as a public hearing to take any comments from the public uh, on this amendment to the TIP. And uh, again, the, uh, at the June 1st meeting, that's when the, uh, the TIP amendment will, uh, the, the public review period will be closed and the TIP amendment is scheduled to be approved. Uh, but the only daily for this meeting is uh, solicit comments from the public. Okay. Is this meeting now? Yeah. Correct. Hi, Jim. <laughs> Do you have a comment on this item? Um, is it for... This is um, Sorry, page it? 9, Mike, Correct. I believe. The one with the mm -hmm. stuff of the NFTA through the state. All right, so that's the, the bus, buying buses. Uh, Mr. Chairman, point of yes. order, could yes. we please open the public hearing? Um, it would be important for okay. you to open the public hearing okay. and then um, recognize people yeah. who are here. Yeah, I'm sorry, Andrew. There's not a big crowd, so that's why. Hey. Okay. Do any, any, any of the commissioners have any comments on the, uh, on what Mike's talking about, what the nerd of the nerd part of this tip? Can I? Sure. Yes, Tony. Um, I get a lot of Uh, I'm just, just, I was just wondering, I'm sure that this has been brought up about um, the viability of electric buses or something that's less noisy because it's, it's a really big complaint with homeowners in town. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I, I think that they're, they're, they're all obviously, uh, you know, kind of depending on the equipment that's being manufactured at the time and, and right now that's with the... Uh, the uh, mufflers and stuff that they have to put on the equipment. Um, that's just, it's, and with the uh, ADA equipment, they have that, it causes a lot of racket and stuff as the things jiggering. Uh, it is something that NRT is aware of, and they do try to buy the, be conscious of the noise. Um, and uh, right now they're using these flex fuel vehicles that are um, probably somewhat compromising noise a little bit with the air quality improvements that those vehicles give you. So that's really the trade off, but it is, they are aware of the, the noise complaints and something that hopefully as time goes on and put the technology is better that it can be addressed uh, just with better machines. Natural gas or gas? Uh, no. They do look at that, and each one of these options have their own uh, trade offs that is just not practical. I think electric vehicles, uh, the battery technology yeah, just yeah, still yeah. isn't there. Uh, natural gas has its own issues that, that uh, lead them to, to stay with the equipment they've picked. Um, they're trying to be balanced out the, the air quality emissions and, and obviously the noise issues and the size of the vehicle. It's a special um, mm -hmm. size that they have to buy that can navigate the streets that we have on island. So uh, they're kind of dependent on that. So it's really the best they can do right now is until the equipment gets better. Mike, too, and just to tell you the real story about that, the buses that they use are internationals right now, the ones that they're buying. Mm -hmm. And they use this Max Force engine, which is the Navistar version of, they didn't use the tier four that the Cummins uses. But so when those buses go through their cycle, I'll bet you the next group are a lot quieter. And the new ones are quieter than the old ones. It's, yeah, but they don't have not, all new ones. not with that, not with those. Are, these are 2010 compliant. It's just that the type of emission that they picked, that particular company, it makes them, it's, it's noisy. I don't know why, but the Cummins engine si system isn't noisy. So they'll, they're going to be changing. Like you listen to a diesel pickup and it's quiet now mm -hmm. and that bus is loud. Well, it's, that, the, it's the engine that they use and not the, it's not like, they're all emissions the same now. 
It's, it's a, just a particular engine that they have. I don't know why they, they're so loud, but that's what it is. The old NRT addresses weren't we're, as loud. We're quieter. That's true. Right. You're absolutely yeah. correct about that. But they were all gas ones. They, no, no they're, they're different yeah, engines. Especially with it going an hour later now, people are. Dover Street, no. places like that, it is loud. People listening to Dover and New York for years. You know, it's, someday it's it'll, it'll, it'll be all quiet. Well, but the other thing is, I, I don't understand why they need to idle for 10 minutes sometimes. They should shut it off and sit and be quiet. It's not really a gas savings or a fuel savings to sit and idle and start up again. Shut it off. Well, the technology is there to the <coughs> my car does it, where if I stop at a stop sign, it, the engine kind of shuts down and restarts when I take my foot off the brake when it's on, like, an eco mode. Yeah. And these buses are, are similar. I mean, they're meant to be hybrids, and, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that's where you get a lot of the uh, the noise. Is uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a brand new technology, so they're just working on the kinks, just like Matt says. Is that's sure eventually they'll get wider and wider. That's where the all the all the engine companies scrambled in 2010 to meet this the next level, and now they're kind of sort of settling down, and that was like the old 11, just after 2010, those buses. I don't know what they're buying. The new one. Are the new ones going to be the same ones, Mike? That they're getting, or are they a different company? Uh, it's from Dactyl's name, the manufacturer. I don't know too much beyond that. Okay. So that had to be Face the chassis. The operator. Yeah. Okay, Wendy. Yes. I'm just wondering: Is there an right. action point to be taken here from this group on that? Like, do we put a line? This has been noticed, right? right? Is it in the tip for the future, or is it? Uh, well, the, the public hearing right now is just. To, to add know, these, just, these expenses and um, right, so I just wondered if this noise thing is completely off topic or if it's yes. something that we can. Okay. Yeah, Sorry. It's something we can <laughs> I thought I'd make a line here for real quick. Okay, so if no one else has any questions. I'll open the public hearing. Any comments? No, Debbie. Sorry. Uh, I used to work right across from Nurgle. I had in the store there for one year. It wasn't even one year. I couldn't even wait to get out of there. I felt like I was... The, the dirt from them, the noise, it was like constant, constant going. So anyway, I did a little research. And then you could pass these down. Uh, these are electric buses. Um, I happened to, last year, Purchase uh, an electric car, and um, it's pretty incredible. You plug it in, <coughs> and then it goes, and it doesn't make any noise. It doesn't make any pollution. Um, you see 15 people. I'm sure there are other um, brands out there, uh, manufacturers, but it's pretty cool, and they're a heck of a lot less expensive. So even if you had to have two to do one route so that after however long it would run for, each one is different, I guess, uh, each manufacturer. Um, oh. um, you still be a fraction of the cost of what you're, you're looking at to buy uh, with funds from the state. Um, and just because you have the funds from the state doesn't mean you have to and I guess um, such an expensive thing. They're horrible. Those things are so noisy, and I mean, the dirt in, in my store was unbelievable. When you say dirt, what do you mean by dirt? Soot? Black soot, yeah. Well, that, they, they don't, I don't, I, I don't want to get into a debate about that. What year was that, Debbie? If you don't mind. 2011. Just a few years ago? Yeah. yeah. Those engines that are in those vans, that Don just mentioned, the noisy ones, the new ones that are noisy. They don't pollute, though. There's nothing coming out the tailpipe of these vehicles. The older buses did smoke, but these new ones don't. I mean, it's that simple. They don't smoke anymore. And the industry, you know, we talk about pollution like it's 1970. It isn't. The, the problem with going to new, with the steamship just tried to do electric buses, and they bagged it because there was no way that they could get reimbursed if they didn't work. We almost did it, putting in these magnet things to charge them. It was going to cost a lot of money. 
Okay. Probably up front. But no, but they couldn't. There was no guarantee from the company. Okay, that, that they if worked. they didn't work, that we would be able to be reimbursed. Okay. And every day that goes by, traditional fuels are getting better and cleaner. So it's not like we're in 1970 comparing it to this. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to get continuously cleaner. Well, I'm sure that there are people, you know, in other places making these decisions for a reason. You know what I mean? Well, you have a public so. hearing here, and you've asked for public comments, so don't just shoot me down, okay? I didn't shoot you down. Well, you said people are making these decisions. For no, reasons. what I'm talking about is there's a reason that they're not doing this. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. And the Mr. Chairman. It only goes 50 miles. Yeah. Could I, could I just point out on the second page of what was passed out that this vehicle is not, is intended for private or off-road? I just saw that one. It is not a street legal vehicle, so this is interesting, but it's not That's why eligible it's for uh, on-road. And it's only 50 miles per charge, which okay. would be as This is a suggestion. I'm sure there are other things out there. Not the carry yeah. three so much people. Can I ask? Yes, you go ahead. What body makes this decision? Because it's not us, Slug right? NERDA. NERDA. Yeah. So Select and act as the NERDA board. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The NRC makes the selection of the equipment. The funding can is channeled through the NBUC, and we approve that as part of the, the TIP uh, process. Um, but again, the selection and the review, it's all done. So is there a place for it where we have input on what? vehicle they choose or not. I'm just trying to figure out what our purview is. We don't have uh, through the tip process as, as you know there is uh, money in there for, for vehicle purchasing that it's included in the tip, the uh, at least the transit portion of it. What you're more familiar with is the highway portion of it where we look at intersections and bike paths and things like this. But the NRT does have funding that's included in the tip and there in the transit section as well. So it's 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 a question to be asked but you know it's, it's it, it is routinely asked. So that they do look into this and just after their review and analysis, it just it's what they have now is the most cost effective at this time. Um, I'm sure that could change in the future as technology is evolving. They're not thinking about one place either. But that level of specificity isn't in this plan. As far as Selectman and, and um, Paula make Right, as far as the noise and the fuel choice. And this one thing I didn't know. Well, for another, I mean, we have this conversation another day. Buy a less than 30 foot bus for. for I mean, this this, this two hundred twenty five thousand dollar line item right here. It's it's a, it's a purchase, and it's something that's on the state contract that they can purchase. So, um, yes. Is the state anywhere else that is offering uh, the monies to different communities? Do they have any electric buses anywhere? Is it something they have looked at or considered? Uh, I, I have to double check and see what that is statewide. I mean, I'm sure that they look at all the angles and say what is most cost effective, what's easier, but as times are changing and as we evolve, we are a tourist community and we probably would want to look at something that is cleaner, less noisy, more efficient. It, it's a possibility in the next five years, so I mean, I think it's something to just put on the radar screen to consider. Mm -hmm. We had an electric bus several years ago. The first year, wasn't yeah. it? Second year? Yeah. First or second year, right. Pam Killen well, cut the river. halfway through the day, they'd have to change the battery. Oh, okay. And to do it, they had to fought with it so heavy. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> to take it out of the bus and take it to place to charge it and put the other one in. So in the middle of the day, they had to shut oh, down. Well, in 1978, computers were the size of this right. entire room. So, I mean, everything changes and becomes yeah, more electric, efficient. No, no doubt there are electric buses on the main line, and they probably work fine. But we'd have to find one that built for us standard what we needed for mm -hmm. our size. We don't want any big buses. Right. Yes, yep, right. I was telling uh, him that I, I saw a program on television where it was a city in South Carolina somewhere that did it, but it was done with federal money. And they did half of their buses with propane and, and the other half electric. But they didn't have any small buses because the ba you need so many batteries. They had to have big city buses to have enough space to put the batteries in them. So that was sort of the problem. 
if your city it works out because you used to have big city buses. But it's something we ought to look into anyway. Because anyway. Just, and, and one of these days, they're probably, as you were saying, the technology will catch up and. Sure, they're done for cars and vans and whatnot. Mm -hmm. They should be able to do it for small bus. Yeah, I know Paula goes to these expos and stuff. Yeah. That happen throughout the entire region. She's, she's more familiar with the equipment that's being offered this year than, than probably any of us. Yeah, we should talk so to her. Yeah, Maybe we can just invite her in for an explanation, Mike, just to yeah, just good. to get a, you know, a, that's a good point. That expo stuff, they have all these things at these conventions and yeah. the fluffy stuff and everything else. And there's reasons that this isn't rolling off the assembly line like toasters and microwaves. Yeah. Okay. So when you go to the airport and you see natural gas buses, there's a reason that they're working because they don't go anywhere. They go back to the yard. And they fill, get filled up by somebody that's trained to do it every night. They don't can't drive way away from Logan Airport with a natural gas bus because you're out of gas. Just go around the circles. <laughs> you know. Okay. Next, uh, if there's any, any more comments, the next thing is the uh, the UPWP, Mike. What page are we going to on that? Let's see. Trying to be. Uh, Mr. Chair, can we continue the, the hearing to the uh, June 1st meeting? So moved. Oh, okay. So moved. Second. Okay. I'm sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, I see. Okay, we're not taking a vote on this. No, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm sorry about that, Mike. I didn't realize that. Okay, got it. Sorry. I didn't think we had to do that. Hands. What page? Mr. Chairman, the next item in the agenda is the Regional Transportation Plan update. And as approved at the uh, the last meeting, um, the NPC did set up a work group of uh, Jack Gardner and Kara Bisnowski. Uh I met with them to uh, essentially come up with a schedule of what our regional projects would be as well as what our local funding capital requests would be. Uh, and take into account the uh, project evaluations um, I, I will spare you uh, 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 the uh, the uh, evaluation summary. Uh, of course, I do have it if you want to go over it. But basically, the uh, the schedule that that we recommend is, is included in your packet. And um, page ten. 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 You're not going to be able to see it. You got to look at the one on the screen. Something small. So basically, <laughs> as you all know, the uh, the regional transportation plan is uh, a, a schedule of projects going out to 2040. Uh, using uh, and to schedule the projects based on a budget that, that we're given by MassDOT of you know anticipated federal and state aid that we're getting in that time period, and based on that information, what we try to do is schedule out the projects, keeping those uh, funding amounts uh, uh, constant and trying to stay within that to, to stay within some fiscal constraint. Uh, you can see on the table that basically the in town bike got the first phase the project's already going now; it's only in the pipeline. That that's the first project listed. Uh, the next two projects are two intersection projects, the, uh, the Surfside and Barlow Road uh, intersection. I uh, put the readiness of that project uh, made it a good candidate to have it at the top, as well as the, uh, the Fairgrounds Old South Road uh, with the, the new fire station expansion. Yep. We figured the readiness of that, that should probably yep. be at the top as well. But what's also near the top are the other phases of the in-town bike path project and uh, the, uh, the high school intersection, the Four Corners intersection. Is, uh, it's right, and once you get past that, then it starts to really get kind of static. And uh, as far as what projects could be funded uh, within the budget, you can see in some of the out years on the bottom line that uh, we start to get into some of the negative negative funding. Uh, so we do need to uh, basically get guidance from MassDOT to how to handle these projects. Some of these will probably be projects that we uh, constructed over multiple years. Uh, so that's one way we can we can solve it. But essentially, we're we're at this negative uh, um, uh, funding that's available, uh, mostly because we have to project out using like a four percent annual inflation rate for project costs. And just just for, as a, for instance, the uh, Wawa bike path here estimated at two point three million dollars, but all the way out in twenty thirty six, if you use the the four percent per year inflation rate, it starts to be over a five million dollar project. Um, now it doesn't mean that those costs will, it's actually going to be $5 million in 2036. It's just, just a way of, of guesstimating what the cost would be compared to what the funding um, that we're anticipating. You see that the funding's not too much more 
uh, in some of the earlier years. So um, um, you get an idea of, of how few projects we can fund uh, this way. There's a, you know, down at the bottom of the page, there's a whole listing of projects that uh, just couldn't make this schedule. Uh, but what we've also had on the, uh, as far as the uh, TIP eligible kind of regional funded projects, there's the, uh, the local capital project requests. And uh, there, the, uh, you know, we're talking with Kara, and you know, feel free to chime in at any time, but we felt that the ask this year uh, would be for uh, First Way, uh, the design funding for the uh, Surfside and the Bartlett uh, intersection, as well as the Fairground South so Road intersection, the design money for that as well. And then the design money for the uh, future phases of the in-town project. And along with all those design and construction requests, there's a, a bottom one for, for sidewalk uh, additions and modifications um, around the ferry terminals that I think we would like to just test the waters with uh, some work out of the roads and right of way committee to evaluate sidewalks in the downtown area and coordinating with them Commission on disability and and uh, doing some evaluations in house we figured it might be good to, to ask for some funds this year on, on improving uh, uh, reconstructing and expanding the sidewalk system in the downtown area Go ahead, yeah, I just want to jump in. Um, when we were talking about the in-town bike path phase um, three, is the one that goes from Spruce to, to the Rotary? Uh, correct. And then two is the one that goes back towards town. Um, we are going to have lines painted in the next couple of weeks, and to you know, Jack and Mike and I were talking about um, painting in the 11-foot lanes that are characteristic of the proposal for the in-town bike path. And in areas beyond the landmark house, that's actually going to create a, um, a, a distance between the white line and the edge of the road. So it's going to give people a sense of what the bike lanes are going to um, look like because the 11-foot uh, lane uh, cross-section is what we're going to use through that area. So, that, that, you know, so no, because the there's because there's a lot of width there. Right. Right. Yeah. And we, we figure we need an 11-foot yeah. all, the, all the big truck in there. Yeah, 11. And with, with all the tankers that are going to be coming in the future, we need that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of trucks no matter what. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. So. Well, that's good, Mike. That's good. Uh, so this is the recommendation from the work group. Um, if there's no objection to it all, I'll roll this into a, a draft planning document. For the, uh, the June 1st meeting, there should be a draft plan ready for the commission's review prior to that meeting. Uh, what the commission will be asked to do is take a look at that, find if there's anything that that's, uh, just catches your eye, something you would not want released to the public, or should be changed and left out of the plan, or something that was left out should be added into the plan. Uh, and then at that June 1st meeting, uh, we'll ask the commission to release that for public review and then have it approved in the, uh, at the end of July, I believe July 22nd, I believe, is the other date that we would like to have that plan approved. So, uh, Okay, and that's one of the meetings you mentioned last meeting. Okay. Exactly. Is there a percentage used for design costs? Between 10 and 15, I think I used 15%. <laughs> so this is a continuing mic as well this is continuing uh, correct uh, like we'll we'll have a draft plan if there's no objection to this schedule I'll roll this into a draft document and then we'll have this ready for the other uh, June 1st meeting um, for the commission to view with the, the well, actually the whole planning document mm -hmm. not just the, uh, the implementation schedule and uh, what I've also included in the packet are just project descriptions that were included in the plan as well. If there's any additional comments from some of our previous, that are left over from our previous meetings, uh, we can take the opportunity now to just kind of talk about those. Uh, but I think we've 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 gone through those uh, at a couple of different meetings. So if there's no comments on those, we can okay. uh, just continue to the next meeting. I'll take a, I'll make, uh, make a motion yeah. to go to June. First. Second. Is there a second. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Okay, Catherine. Um, okay, Mike. So we need to go to <clears throat> another the long range t TIF now. An action C. Is that what we're doing? Uh. Yeah. This is this is on. Uh, the, the trans well, the regional transportation plan B was the uh, the 
the uh, long range plan. The uh, transportation improvement program is the four year planning document. Okay. The, and on page, uh, on page uh, three of the packet, there is a schedule of four years uh, that includes the in town bike path, the first phase for years 15 and 16. Okay. Uh, and then the out years for 17, 18, and 19. Uh, I'm including resurfacing a Pulpus Road uh, for those three years, but these are projects to be switched out and replaced with some of the candidate projects we had talked about earlier, the, uh, the intersection projects at Bartlett and Surfside, yep. or Old South Road and Fairgrounds. Uh, depending on, on how those designs progress, uh, assuming they get funded and, and uh, there's no um, major issue with the design process. We can include that into, say, uh, 2018 or 19 of the TIP, um, either one or both of those intersection projects. But right now, since there's really no other project in design, I'm just including the other roadway sur resurfacing for the, uh, for the TIP and those out years. But again, for the understanding, that those out years can change. Okay. Can we also put the Pulpus Road thing into a capital if we wanted to? We could do that, right? Um, okay. Yeah, we start with the building all around the school and it's a good time to get all that work done. Mm. So we're building the new school, that way we'll take time to get it done with all those good sections complete. Okay. All right, Mike, what else do we have? If there's no objections to this schedule, I'll include that into the, uh, the draft tip that will be uh, available for your review at the, the June 1st meeting. And then at the June 1st meeting, the commission will be asked to uh, um, uh, initiate a public review process of, of that tip, okay. very similar to the regional transportation plan. Okay. What's yeah. the ramifications of leaving the resurfacing in now and not putting in the the roundabouts that we have talked about? Nothing really. There's really no. I mean, it's it's because we update these things annually um, that uh, next year we can have the opportunity to switch that out, assuming that it's an approved project at the uh, at MassDOT level. And DOT is not inclined to diminish any importance no. of the project because it shows up? Um, not really. We, we had our, uh, a TIP consultation meeting with, with, with uh, MassDOT, and I basically explained to them this situation that I've explained to you. They understand that you really need to have a project in the pipeline in order to list it in the TIP. We don't have that, so I'm listening to a surfacing project. Uh, what you should be prepared for is some of the comments we might get back a month from now from MassDOT is that uh, they'd rather see a project not programmed at all rather than program a resurfacing project. Uh, so that, that could be a comment we get back and, and we're, we're asked to remove those. Again, there's no ramifications for it. We just have a year, because uh, we have a project funded this year that we can leave the out years blank. It just, it just helps. Um, well, to, have, to anticipate these projects uh, sometime in advance. But they're aware of our situation, they, they understand it's not ideal, but there's really no um, negative consequences to including those and not including those. Okay. So do we need to make a, take a vote to move this to June 1st, or is this just automatic? If there's no objection, I'll just roll these into the draft documents. Okay. Action, okay. Not necessary, I just wanted to get your, uh, your input on these okay. projects. Okay. All right, Mike. And then the 216 UPWP then? Uh, on page three. four. Still on three. Uh, page, yeah, bottom. portion of page three, that's the review schedule. Again, there's okay. no action being sought on this item either, uh, just like the tip in the RTP, uh, but it's to get your comments. Uh, on page four is the breakdown of the UPWP budget uh, that includes uh, <coughs> salary overhead costs and then direct costs for, for Things such as uh, buying equipment and travel. Um, so there's there's not a big planning study included into this uh, into this budget because frankly there's there's not a lot of discretionary funds to allocate to that. Uh, but we do, as far as planning activities, look at uh, sustainable and, and complete streets, which are streets that have bike path sidewalks and accommodate transit to the best extent possible and accessibility for disabled populations. Looking at parking management, bike pedestrian activities, and uh, anything special that comes up along the way. So we're keeping it very general. And again, this is uh, 
purpose of bringing this up now is to collect any comments you might have uh, while we put together the draft document. And if there's no comments, um, I'll include this, this uh, budget in the uh, draft document that I'll provide to you uh, for the meeting on June 1st. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Do we need to, do we need to uh, take a vote, Mike, to move this to June 1st or no? Uh, if there's no objection, I'll just use this budget okay. and to okay. incorporate that in right. the draft document. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mike, for everything. I know this is a lot of work and confusion and switching and moving, and but it's very important. So we'll move on to the next item is Leslie's contract renewal, Deputy Director of Planning. Catherine, would you um, pass those out, please? Does everyone have a yeah, contract? Yeah, we have it, and it's, and it's also it's over there, and we have a, um, an email as well. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, three years has passed, and now we are up for another three-year contract with Ms. Snell. Yep. Um, and I think probably the easiest way is to walk you through this. We'll just start at the beginning, and yes, I'll go over the changes you. that you have. So on page one, uh, basically the changes are in blue, and there's a note to the side on what has been deleted. So basically there is just a date change in the first page. Second page, beginning at the top, is a date change and an address change. Um, at the time of, uh, under the witnesseth, uh, at the time Leslie was the land use planner promoted to the deputy director, so this just updates her current title. Um, under Article One Appointment, there's you can see there's extensive language that's been deleted, that reflected the fact that she was appointed at that time, and now she's in the position and is continuing under the current um, job duties and uh, expectations. So none of that language was necessary. Page three. Uh, the first set of changes is an update to the date. So this contract just will be effective from August 20th, 2015 to August 19th, 2018. Under compensation, uh, the compensation has been updated in accordance with the town um, request that um, based on the 2% uh, adjustment. So that's been updated there on page three. Page four. Section 4.5, there's been an effort to remove longevity from a number of the department head contracts, um, which we did with my contract. I know Chief Pittman, the town manager. Um, under this, Ms. Snell would continue to receive the longevity uh, until such time that the middle management group, uh, that benefit is negotiated away. Um, I've spoken to Ms. Snell about that, and I think it's, um, it's fair once uh, other employees who she um, supervises, when that benefit is removed, then she's willing to open contracts too. Yeah. Um, and I think it's perfectly acceptable for department heads not to have it, but I uh, see her point, and I believe this, should, this is a reasonable compromise. Um, there was language under 4.5 about a retroactive pay, which is, again, not applicable. Under Section 5.3, the vacation time has been updated to be consistent with her years of service. Uh, there's been excess language um, in 5.4, which, again, that dealt with her transition, so that's been removed. Um, more of that same language on page five has been removed because that was basically transitional. And then finally on page six, the dates have been updated. So I think it's all pretty straightforward. And I would ask that you move forward to approve this contract. Is there a second? No second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Unanimous, Catherine. Thank you, Leslie, for all your efforts. Can't believe it's been since 2002 that you showed up here. 
That's a long time ago. Just a young single girl back there. The Red Sox right? hadn't even won. The Red Sox hadn't even got David Ortiz yet from Minnesota. <laughs> um, Andrew, thank you for that, by the way. Oh, thank you. I mean, it's thank you. Kind of hard to explain that stuff, you know. So, thank you for that. Does anyone have any other business? Yeah. Oh, Andrew's got Sorry. Hold on. Just um, some of you crossover members, the planning board members, were at the Board of Selectmen workshop. Yeah. So, um, let's, yeah, let's talk about that. One of the our annual, essentially our annual meeting is the June first meeting. So, um, and you, Mr. Chairman, are tasked to get people's ideas on topics um, to bring back before the board. Growth and housing. Correct. So topics uh, that board members want to put on the table essentially for discussion with the Board of Selectmen, um, it's, now is the time to do that. So at that June 1st meeting, whatever your ideas are for, again, it doesn't have to be a fully developed idea, but for topics yeah. that you want planning. Basically, we came out of town meeting and some of the issues that are facing us as far as like some of the developments and the housing issues and zoning. You need to get it all out there and discuss it. Because it's, that's good. Can I suggest um, housing production and how to develop housing that's suitable for all the different levels of um, ability? Yeah. yeah. And that was a that was a uh, priority of the selectmen at that meeting. So they did ask that that kind of be a focus. I think it's important to start talking about um, apartments because there's a whole segment of the population that's never going to buy a house. Yeah. And, and, and right now that segment is not being addressed to the extent that it is. I mean rental. Oh, losing people. They have no place to live. Yeah. It's terrible. It will be. Caston so. is proposing several of those apartment buildings. It's so high yeah. in a while. Yeah. There's no balance. You have a lot a lot of input on the apartment building issue, Andrew, as far as zoning changes that you've made, you know, we're never allowed. Right. We you've Well, f we have some fairly new zoning changes. We updated the apartment allowance last year um, to allow six units. We had allowed up to four units yeah. at one time. Six units is allowed, and I believe um, at least the Richmond Company is moving forward at that density. There's questions about whether the economics are, are right for that. Um, the housing study, which all of you should have gotten, if anyone needs a paper copy or didn't receive it, please let us know. Um, but I think that's important for you to review before the meeting and be able to discuss that. Um, our subsidized housing inventory list, and Kara knows about this. We talked about her experience in, um, in her community about how we're not where, we're sh where we should be. 10% of our year-round housing stock is supposed to be available for lower-income people. And um, we're at 2% and haven't moved from that for two decades. Um, we have units that are expiring off the list, which would cut it in half. Um, so there's some issues that we need to talk about. It's expiring off the list. Would they be strict? They were built. The Academy Hill was so built using okay. so a 30-year period. Landmark House is also on the 30-year. So um, anyway, there's there's some issues on housing. There may be other issues in your mind, and again, we need those topics to put together to bring forward and schedule our discussion. I think we should get. Comments in like a week before the meeting, and then the list could be uh, distributed out. No, sort of. Um, instead of there being ten people that are for one thing, one you know. Oh, combined. Combined. combined yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 I'm sure everybody so is very aware of the fact that we're losing so many of the houses because what were at one time modest priced year-round rentals are being bought for people who 
would like to own their own summer home that are in the middle range, mm -hmm. and they're willing to go to yeah. the developments like uh, Nashaquisset or um, the other one on Old South Road, Nasha. Nasha, and purchase something that's a middle range, which used to be our year-round homes. So as we're losing those, there is no year-round housing for people in the low income. Right. And there's a good discussion about that. I mean, Miz and Mass and some of these other neighborhoods, too. Yeah, the that neighborhoods are, are Appleton are, Road, others that are. Which was really used to be out of the question. People that were here for the summer or for four months of the year weren't going to live in neighborhoods. Now they think, oh, this is affordable. Right. right. That's when we need to address more of that 150%, even 200% of AMI for people who are in that range who would be buying those homes but not yep. living because there's, I mean, there's a house for sale and there's a house now that's 1.4. We're just losing our community. Yeah, but, well, mm -hmm. it's, you, you can't ask people to give the houses away. No, you can't. I mean, it's the value of it. They have the right to try to Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's part of the other, other side of the, I guess I would say the discussion's point of capping people. There's a cap that happens by itself because of the prices. I mean, the prices deter people here to, to come here. And a lot of people leave the island, and a lot of people come to the island. It just—it's not going to. That's never going to change. It's been going on for a hundred years. So, it's—it's. It's, this is a. It, it, I don't say it's impossible to have a perfect answer. But there's a lot of imperfect answers that are good, but they're not perfect. They're just going to continue us down the same road we've been going on. We're going to be able to provide, there's going to be little housing developments here and there. But I think the long-term answer is the zoning issues that we discussed, how many of those gigantic lots is going to have a big impact on this stuff. Because keeping families from leaving or selling their land to somebody that's from off island because it's worth so much, you know, keeping people to be able to keep their property in their family is important. Even though you don't see a big change, like you're not building 50 houses and all of a sudden there's 50 owners. It's not like that. But, but keeping families land in the family is key, too. So, I mean, we had three <coughs> tertiary dwellings, Andrew. But they were, we were they all existing, by the way? I know the one on Longwood was, but it was the other the one two. On the whole was still one. It was? Matt, this is, Matt, this is not on the agenda. Yeah. Put this on for June. And, Mr. Chairman, the other idea is, I mean, anyone, f the our meeting in June is typically when we talk, have general discussions about things. So if there's other items, I know, Wendy, you had maybe an item, an update of plus maybe that you wanted to discuss. Or if there's other agenda items, that's the June meeting is typically the one where we discuss that. So if there are ideas, we'd like to get those in early and review it with you, Mr. Chairman. All so right. the agenda is set. Sorry, I was late, but did you talk about uh, board health moving to death? No. I did not go over all that, but I, I will. Seems smiling. <laughs> <laughs> well. And that's, that's one of the topics that, uh, at least an update to the PLUS contract, where we might go over some of where, what some of those changes are. We've talked to town administration about moving the energy person, at least, to the office. To um, two fair enough. Yep. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. And there may be some other things to talk about, with, you know, about the in general updating the plus contract with the, with the town. So. Okay. Is everyone good? Motion to adjourn. Is there second. a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Yeah. Yeah. Don't leave those contracts here. You might want to give those contracts back to Kevin. Yeah, yeah, don't leave stuff like that out. Exactly. Three years when I was here. And then it became the farm. Yeah, I thought it was moon. The elegant dunk? No, the elegant dunk was. Yeah, right, right. I remember that. Yeah, how long was Jeans here? Jeans was. That was. It was um, the pharmacy, right? No, yes. But that was. Um, I had a lot of real estate, you guys.
have a lot of, like, wait a minute. Oh, my God. I'm having a brain. She was low. I want to move along. She was low. Yeah, that was, um, she's passed away now. Oh, she passed away? Yeah. She seems like a glow Yeah, that was, um, it's not a why am I having such a tough time? Yeah, you're thinking about something. I don't know. I can't think about the brain. I think it's certainly all the decisions that lead up to it are made.